The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the angels went away from them to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go then to Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it, be, it, as it had been told to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, we are coming close to the end of the Advent season and the celebration of Christmas. And this year's celebration of Christmas is going to be so different than anything that we've ever experienced before. And I just pray that you'll have a really blessed Christmas, that God will bless you in very many ways, and that it will really be a happy Christmas for each and every one of you. You know, we looked at already about believing in what God has said to us, like Mary did when the angel asked her to be the mother of Jesus. We also looked at doing something about this, do, putting into practice the gifts that God has given to us. But when we look at the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem, we also see that we need to receive the gift of God. It's not enough just to believe, but to receive, to hear God's word, to pray like Mary did. It said that Mary pondered all of these things in her heart. She thought about them, she prayed about them so that she could, with God's help, understand what God was doing more and more clearly. We need to pray as well. We need to think about what God has done. We need to be able to rejoice, to be happy about the fact that Jesus has come into this world. But another way that we receive Jesus is not only by praying about things, thinking about all that God has done for us, but it's also to receive Jesus in Holy Communion. Now, I know not, that not all of you are able to do that, but it is something that's very important because when we look at the birth of Jesus, his first resting place was in a manger. Well, what is a manger? A manger is a feeding trough for the animals. This is where the animals would go and eat. But this is showing to us that one day Jesus was going to give himself to us as the bread of life that Jesus was going to become our food so that we could receive him into our very bodies and allow him to change us, to transform us, to be closer and closer to him so that we can live close to Jesus in this life but also to be with Jesus forever in heaven. Because that's really what our hope is. In this life, it's not always going to be easy to be a follower of Jesus, to be a disciple of Jesus. Jesus told us that it wasn't always going to be easy and that there were going to be some tough times that we have to go through. Whether, we're, whether we follow in the ways of Jesus or not, we're all going to go through tough times. But what is so marvelous about God's promises to us is that through those tough times, we can one day uh, go from this life into eternal life and to be happy with God forever in heaven. So when we think about the birth of Jesus, we think about the gift of God, that God has given us this tremendous gift of Jesus, but we need to receive this gift, just like the gifts that we're going to get at Christmas. It's wonderful for people to give us gifts, but we need to receive those gifts. God is giving to us a very, very precious gift in Jesus, so we need to listen to his word, to receive his word, and even to receive him in Holy Communion, so that we can always be very close to Jesus in this life, so that we can be happy with Jesus forever in heaven.